If you had one message that you could send out to aliens, what would that message be? Well, in 1972, that's the exact dilemma that NASA scientists encountered. And this is what they came up with. This is the Pioneer plaque, and it's more than just a drawing. Hey, Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, we're going to decode the Pioneer plaque. <laughs> So NASA actually made three of these, not one, and they etched it onto gold anodized aluminium plaques. One was placed onto the Pioneer 10 space probe in 1972, which headed to Jupiter. And it was actually the first of five artificial objects to achieve the escape velocity needed to leave our solar system. We lost contact with it in 2003, so 31 years later. And by this time, it was about 12 billion kilometers from Earth. So for reference, the next stellar system, Alpha Centauri, is four light years away, or 40 trillion kilometers away. So we didn't break much distance at all. The second plaque was launched a year later on Pioneer 11, which went to study the asteroid belt, Jupiter, and then Saturn. Pioneer 11 was the second of five artificial objects to leave our solar system. And similarly, we also lost contact with it, but in 1995, so even earlier, and the last plaque didn't go to space at all, but is in fact hiding in the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. The idea is that hopefully this galactic postcard will one day get intercepted by intelligent extraterrestrial life, be it a million or even billions of years in the future. And at least, at the very least, they will know that we existed. It is humanity's lasting legacy. Carl Sagan said that this will be the oldest artifact of mankind because a billion years from now, mountain building erosion will have destroyed everything here on Earth, but the plaque will still remain intact. So what exactly do we see? Well, in the top left here, we have two circles and they're connected by a line with a dash beneath it. This is in fact a schematic of the hyperfine transition of hydrogen. This is the most abundant element in our universe. Now, the circles represent two spin states of the electron and proton in a neutral hydrogen. When the electron flips its spin, it emits radiation with a unique wavelength of 21 centimeters. The dash is actually a binary one, and it indicates that these natural constant values are gonna be used as our universal yardstick and universal clock for all of the other measurements on this plaque. Everything is relative to the neutral hydrogen spin flip. Now, binary was chosen as the interstellar language on the plaque because it is the most universal way to represent numbers, and it's really simplistic. So it would be very robust to erosion in space. There's not much to get rid of. Binary is a base two system, which uses only two states, zero and one, usually depicted by a horizontal stroke and a vertical stroke, respectively. It's read from left to right, and the sum of each digit multiplied by two to the power of n, where n is the position of that value. So next we have a nude man and woman, and they're standing in front of a spacecraft. This shows who we are. Next to the woman, we have a vertical bar and then three dashes, which represents one zero zero zero. Now this is the number eight in binary. But notice that there's a defect in the first zero, which reportedly is only in the replica and not in the original. Now, this is sandwiched between two markers, which correspond to the height of the woman. Since the unit of length is 21 centimeters from our universal key of the hydrogen spin flip, this tells the finder that the woman is eight times 21 centimeters or about 168 centimeters tall. Now, this establishes the scale of the human species. Our man there holds up his palm, depicting five fingers, and this is in the hope of showing a gesture of peace. Carl Sagan actually wanted this to be included, even though this gesture might not be universally understood. We don't know what the palm stands for to aliens. But actually, originally, Sagan wanted the humans to be shown holding hands. But then later he realized that 
this might have been misinterpreted as a single creature rather than two, so he decided against it. The spacecraft behind them is, of course, the Pioneer spacecraft, and of course it's built to the same scale too. And just to the left of the 1000 mark marks the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. Now this forms part of the pulsar map, which is a radial pattern with 15 lines emanating from the origin. The 14 other lines correspond to 14 pulsars identified by Frank Drake, the same Drake that came up with the Drake equation, where these pulsars, these rapidly rotating neutron stars that emit regular radio pulses, are the shortest periods of rotation and the brightest luminosities to make them the easiest to identify, even after very long stretches of time. And the length of each line shows the distance of that pulsar from our sun relative to the distance to the center of our galaxy. Beneath each pulsar line, there's this long binary number, and this corresponds to a pulsar's pulse period or frequency. But remember that this is all in units of hydrogen time, so we need to normalize for that. Now this map is in 2D, so there is a tick mark on each line that gives the Z coordinate relative to the galactic plane. And this is also used to determine the distance from the galactic center for each pulsar. The pulsar map is designed to be a set of triangulation coordinates so that an alien intelligence can locate our solar system using the angle above or below the galactic plane. But it actually tells us a lot more than this. Pulsars change periods very predictably over immense timescales. So by the time it reaches the aliens, they might be beating differently. But this acts as a galactic timestamp, telling the finder when the Pioneer craft was actually launched. And lastly, maybe the most controversial is this schematic of our solar system at the bottom of the plaque. Nine planets here orbit the sun, because back then Pluto was still a planet. Then we've got this curved arrow, which shows the path of the spacecraft launched from the third planet, Earth, passing by the fifth planet, Jupiter, whose gravity provided a slingshot out of our solar system and headed into interstellar space. Now this all assumes that aliens understands what an arrow even means, and there's no guarantee of that. These are not drawn to scale also, but are instead accompanied by binary values that represent their distance from the sun relative to a tenth of Mercury's orbit. They're not made in the same reference to the universal hydrogen scale. And supposedly, aliens would be able to figure this out because the binary system on which these measurements are written is in a different font compared to the rest of the plaque. So there you have it. How did you get on with decoding this message? And what do you think the odds of alien life being able to solve it is? That's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe. Hey space cats, fly with me to the stars, faster than light.